In this lab, we want to take a look at a planar joint. So I have a disc with a planar face on the bottom of that disc, and that planar face is against this planar table. And then I have established contact joints that when I move this disc, when it comes to the edge of the table, it stops. So, and it also, it bounces with a certain amount against uh, a contact. And so we'll see how to adjust that bounce and how to create that contact. And so we see over here, now if I come over here, it goes inside that hole. It'll come back out of the hole and of course go inside to the hole the other side. And then uh, this second part, the same, same sort of thing. If I move the second part, it uh, doesn't uh, go through the table. And if I come up here though, it should go part way through this hole, but uh, actually I need to make this part a little bit bigger or the hole a little bit smaller. The plan is for this to not go through. And actually it shouldn't go through anyway because this sh should come in contact. And so we'll need to make a little bit of change to that so that this cannot go all the way through that part um, like that. But when it comes in contact with uh, this part, it moves that part. And depending on how hard it hits that part, depends on the reaction of the second part. So let's look at how to set up a planar joint. Now this will be a little bit of a fudge from what we might recognize as this game in that these two components are permanently attached to this table with the planar joint. That is, they can't come up off of the table. So that's just a slight little fudge in our setup. So I started a new part file and I saved it with the name planar disk and I'll go to the top view and start a new sketch and draw a circle make that circle a diameter of 1.5 inches and then I'll extrude that mid plane a distance of 0.375 and then I want a fillet to go from this face to this face and I want that fillet to adjust no matter what distance I do that extrusion at. So I'll do fillet and I'll do a full round fillet. For side face one I'll select that face. For the center face I'll select this face and for side face two I'll select that face. So that rounds off my part with a fillet that would change even if I change the thickness of this part. We'll go ahead and change the color of this part and so I'm going to make my part yellow you can make your part whatever color that you like and I'll save the part. I then start a new assembly and place the planar plate that we made earlier and I will drag and drop the planar disc over into this assembly and then I'll do C for constraint and I will mate this face to the bottom face of the disc. So we see that this disc will slide around um, anywhere on this table but right now it can go out the uh, ends of the table. Go to dynamic simulation and we see that this was automatically converted to a planar joint. Again we could turn that off the, the automatic setting. Let's just go ahead and do that and I'll tell it no not to maintain that. Then I'll have to move this out here so I can see the bottom of it and so if we wanted to do that manually we could get it from the joint table or we could do planar from this drop down list. So it asked me to select component number one. I could set an origin if I like. Uh, Maybe I want this point to be my origin and I could flip the x-axis. Really won't matter. Inventor is going to automatically align our parts. I'll go to component number two and I'll select the planar face on component number two. Now notice it asks you to select a plane here and it asks you to select a plane 
there it also establishes a Z direction so you could flip the Z so the triple arrowhead is actually Z on this one is coming out here to the side so Y is a double arrowhead going up and X is the single arrowhead and again I could uh, select the circle to find the origin if I want to establish the origin as the center of that circle then if I wanted to flip that X axis so that it's closer to being lined up I'm sure the Y in this case is in the same direction and I'll say okay to that now because on this one I established this at the origin I selected the origins it put that part with the origins at that location all right so your goal then is to keep this on the table so it can't go out of the table it goes into this hole uh, so apply the appropriate constraints based on what we've done previously in order to give this the behavior that you would expect and then after you've spent a few minutes on that I will come back and show you a solution If you want to turn off these origin indicators, it's just a matter of coming over here and clicking on some other location and that will hide that origin indicator. So we want to do a 2D contact joint between these fences. Notice that this one is up higher than this one. So this one's above the table. This one is on the table. But think of these fences as infinitely tall fences that go in both directions. So they come up on this, this case the Y direction and the Y positive and Y negative negative direction to infinity so two infinitely tall fences so I'll do insert joint and I'm going to do this as a 2d contact joint and so it asked me to select the first curve and so I'm going to select this curve now I want to make sure that I get the sketch curve and not the edge of the part so I'm going to select other and I will select that curve on the sketch now it only highlights one section of the curve but it has to be a closed curve and it will find the entire path so I select that curve and then I will select the circle on this part now notice that there is a Z direction pointing out from that circle if the Z direction is pointing out it's going to treat this as a cylinder if it's pointing in to the circle it would treat that as a hole so I want the Z pointing out that's to the outside of this circle but on this one the Z is pointing to the outside of the fence I want the Z pointing towards the inside of the fence so that was my first selection so I'm going to flip that loop so that Z is pointing towards the inside of the fence now sometimes it's difficult to tell whether it's pointing towards the inside or the outside we'll see in a few minutes how to take care of that so you could not even try to adjust it at this point and we just say okay to that then I'm going to try to test this out so I'll drag my part and I expect it to come into contact over here and I expect it to come in contact over here I expect it to go through the hole and and then once it goes through the hole now right now it's a little bit difficult to control because it's moving really quickly if I increase the number of calculations instead of doing 100 calculations if I do 500 calculations or a thousand it will slow down the motion so I can control it a little bit better uh, when I'm just dragging it with the mouse Now we might get end up with some situations if you drag it too fast where it says it's impossible to proceed so we don't want to drag it too fast I want to be a little bit faster than that so so I'm going to change that put that down to 250 and once I verified the motion I might reduce the number of calculations alright so I have that much working now let's say that it didn't work correctly or sometimes if we drag this too fast we could get it in an unvalid condition I'm gonna to try to do that I'm gonna to try to drag it and I might not be able to get it out what I was trying to do is get it to go through the fence and uh, let's do that manually so if I suppress this 2d contact constraint I could get it outside of the fence so sometimes you accidentally do that when you're moving it with the mouse and you go too fast so what you would do is just suppress it then drag it back into a valid condition and then unsuppress the constraint and now you're back in a valid uh, condition
So that's a trick that we'll use frequently is to suppress that constraint. Then I want to adjust though how much this part bounces when it comes into contact in that 2D contact. So I'm going to right click, actually I need to show you two options on this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to properties. Uh, earlier I flipped the Z direction on these components. You can also flip the Z direction when you go to the properties of the, the joint. In earlier versions of Inventor, two, three years ago, this was the only way that you could flip the uh, direction of the Z or the normal direction. Let's look at two numbers here, restitution and friction. On the real world, it would be floating on a cushion of air, so friction would be very low. Let's put it, just put friction at zero. The restitution, now let's look at this number. Imagine that I was holding a bowling ball, say up about here, and I dropped that bowling ball against this floor. The restitution is how far back that bowling ball would return up when it, when it bounces. If I drop it from three feet and I have it at 0.8, it's going to bounce back up 80% of three feet. If I set it to zero, it's not going to bounce at all. If I set it to one, it's going to bounce back up from the original position that I dropped it from. So in order to get this number, and the, and the difference would be if I have a carpeted floor or a concrete floor or a wood floor, the difference of this restitution would be different depending on the materials of the components. As far as determining what that would be, you would most likely need to do an empirical study, do some actual tests with the materials, and uh, drop from a certain height and measure the balance or the restitution for those materials. You may be able to find some ballpark numbers on the internet. And also you can do this as based on experience. So from your experience, if you say, Saying, ah, that's about right. Um, you know, I, I expect this when I hit it against there. I expect it to, you know, bounce a certain amount. So, at least it, to set up the problem, you could use some trial and error numbers to set up your restitution value. Let's start a new part file, and then I'm going to go to the top view, and I will create a sketch on the XZ plane. Uh, I'll draw a circle diameter two inches, and then I'm going to draw another circle, and I will dimension this as a, a diameter of 0.5 and I will draw a third circle. I'm going to dimension this as an offset distance between here and here. Let's do that at 0.1875. Alright, I'm going to finish that sketch and then I will do extrude and I'm going to extrude this inside circle and I'm going to go up a distance of 1.5 for that circle. And I'll make that sketch visible again, so I'll turn on the visibility of the sketch and I will extrude this circle and I'm going to make that the equivalent of this distance. So notice that hand symbol on here, I'm going to make that a function. So I'll highlight that dimension, make it a function of this dimension. And then I'll do one more extrude and I'm going to extrude this circle a distance of 0.535. I'll then add a fillet up here on this edge. I'll do fillet. I'll select that edge and we'll go ahead and accept that 0.125. I'll turn off the dimension visibility and I'm going to change the color. I'll save this. I'm going to call this player. I'll place the player onto the table. All right, so now your job is to put a joint on here, a planar joint and 2D contacts such that when it comes in contact with this part, it causes it to move so that this stays within this boundary and so that this stem here doesn't go through this hole on this end or on this end. So I'll let you work on that for a few minutes and then I will come back and present a solution. So I place a constraint between the table and the bottom of the player. 
and then I'll go into dynamic simulation and I uh, want to make sure that there is a planar joint now because I turned off earlier I turned off the automatically convert constraints I will have to add my own uh, planar joint so I'll go back in I'll do a planar joint now if we had left it on automatic inventor would do this step for us and uh, actually I, I need to go through the steps here so it's asking me to select the origin or I could just go to component number two. I'll go ahead and uh, select this origin and I'll go to component number two. I'll select that component and if I want to select the origin now it looked like it's selected already the center of that face but I could verify that by selecting it again. I want Z pointing up or the Y pointing up on the first selection so I'll point that up so that those are in the same direction. I will then uh, say OK to that and so this part it moves around now on that plane but it goes right through that part and it will come off of the table so we need to do the 2d contacts so i'll do a joint i'll do 2d contact and i will select again want to make sure that i get one of those sketch boundaries not the edge of the part itself in this case sometimes we can use the edge of the part and i'm going to make sure that i get that curve rather than the edge and then for the second curve i'll get this circle and so z is pointing to the outside on that z is pointing in the wrong direction i want it towards the inside on this fence so i'll flip that z towards the inside on that fence and I'll do apply to that and so now when this part comes over here to the edge it stops but it still goes right through the yellow part uh, let's check it down here on this hole okay so it's going through this hole when this shouldn't go through the hole. So we'll fix that. So I'm gonna do insert join again. And uh, this time I'm gonna get this smaller circle that uh, we use to make this post with. And actually we don't really need that circle. We could select the edge of the part here or we could select the edge of the part here. And uh, when we did this one, uh, we didn't need to have the sketch visible on that either. I'll go ahead and select this edge and it says it's impossible to get a loop from that edge and I'm not sure why it would not accept that. But it did accept this one down here. I guess it didn't like the edge of that fillet. Or we could have just used the sketch. Now I need to keep it from going through this slot if I select this face, it will find the edge of that face as my second loop. And so then it won't go through uh, that rectangle. So I'm going to move it down here. And I, I get it into the hole, but when I get to this point, it won't go any further because that rectangle has come in contact with that circle. Now I need to do the same thing though at the other end. So I have to do it at both ends. And just to demonstrate, let's use the circle instead of instead of using this circle, I'll use the sketch circle. And so I'm going to put my mouse here and I'll right click and do select other and I'll get that circle from the sketch. Make sure that Z is pointing towards the outside and then I'll come down to this end and I'll get this uh, face, that planar face and I will uh, say OK to that. Actually we'll just do apply. We have one more constraint we need to do and that's between this circle and this circle. Now again I could get that sketch circle or I could get this circle. Any one of those circles. If we, if we selected the sketch circle we need to make sure Z is pointing towards the outside. I'll turn off the visibility of the sketches so on the view tab, I'll go to object visibility and I'll hide 2D sketches and I'll go back to my dynamic simulation tab. And if I want to turn off those axis arrows, just come over here and click someplace. At some point they should turn off. And then if I move this along, it should push that part when it comes in contact with it. And then also test it on this end. If I go into this hole, it goes up until that post hits it the top of the hole and then it, it doesn't uh, go any further. So that is a planar joint and 2D contact with restitution emphasizing the idea of the 2D contacts as being fences that we use to keep something in or outside of the fence.